very small board that plugs into a solderless breadboard. And this is an Uno that's uh, kind of the, uh, one of the, well, it's the most popular flavor board. And this is a, a Mini, which is even smaller than the Nano, but it lacks a USB interface. And then this is a raw chip. It's like in the um, Nano, but it's just literally a raw chip. So it can be used directly. So let me get some, some slides here. Have you used the Pro Minis? Virtually none. Never. I mean, almost not. I. Uh, Chip McClellan swears by them. And it's, I mean, that's his word of choice. But, uh, They're super handy to drop in and twiddle a bit. I, I, I've either used the trivially simple to use ones or raw chips, and I haven't. What the mini what's, is kind of in between. What's the difference between the Pro Mini? I don't know. The, the Pro Mini versus the Nano. The Pro Mini doesn't have a USB interface on it. It has an FTDI header. So it's really just the FTDI header, voltage regulator, and a couple LEDs. It's a, a very minimalist uh, 328p implementation. <coughs> and they're 10 bucks. So. Okay. Yeah, it's inexpensive and um, doesn't have an FTDI chip to blow up when you think that you could get a half an amp on mm -hmm. a 3.3 volt supply uh, regulator. Okay, so um, this is going to be the slide, uh, my talk, and the slides will put those up on the uh, meetings archive page, which is fairly easy to find off of the uh, the main trend bit page. Um, the, they'll be up in the next uh, day or two. I'll probably put mine up tonight. Um, Uh, and this presumes that you know what the Arduino IDE is, and I, I apologize in advance if you don't know it. The Arduino IDE is the bread and butter integrated development environment for using to program IDE, I mean uh, Arduino boards. If you don't know what, are, what I, 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 I apologize, but this presumes that you know what that is. So why did I get tired of this. Um, the responsiveness and the speed, it's an IDE when, when you, and it's a very heavy GUI application. It's, the IDE itself is a large Java program. It takes forever to get it going and get it uh, from a cold start. The compilers are also very large. The, the uh, GNU C compiler, for some reason under the IDE, is even slower to start up than it normally is. And the editor is a custom GUI-based uh, editor that requires a lot of mouse movements. And I have a beginning carpal tunnel, so that's not, not good for me. The, um, the IDE, uh, the Arduino um, accepts C and C++, but they don't call it that because they, they don't actually have a standard implementation and they do a lot of stuff with smoke and mirrors behind the scenes and so they describe what they support in a highly mysterious fashion. <coughs> but the fact is, behind the scenes, they're running the GNU C++ compiler, uh, it's, although I guess on some platforms, some operating systems, they, maybe they do something else, I don't know. Uh, I've never does the uh, does Apple use the um, yeah GCC? Uh, I'm not sure if it's GCC, on but it's or not. it's accepting sure it's. C++, which is a, will accept standard uh, C, and um, when you're reusing the IDE, things are happening behind your back that are a little bit strange uh, to do with uh, pre-processing. I call it pre-pre-processing, and um, in some cases, that will get in your face. 
Um, in the older versions, and I only just recently tried the latest Arduino IDE, and I have to say it's spectacularly better than it used to be. And I can't remember, I, I don't know what the time frame of the version was that I had been using up to that point, but it's probably an order of magnitude two to three years old. The current version gets error messages correct. So when you have a syntax error in your source code <clears throat> on line 42, and you look on line 42, you're going to actually find your code that has a syntax error instead of some part of your program that either doesn't exist because there is no line 42 or a block comment. Um, it used to be that it would uh, get that wrong, but that's history, been fixed. Um, what was actually, when things worked right, it was great. When things didn't work right, it was quite difficult to figure out what was happening. Um, I finally determined where the IDE puts all of its temporary files, and I could go look there and figure out what's happening, which is kind of an inconvenient way of doing it. Also, the IDE in, in, in a Linux environment for me was uh, causing severe problems. Uh, let's see if I can fix that screensaver. For me, um, <clears throat> the um, handling of USB uh, interfaces would occasionally go wrong, and when it did, I would end up with an instance of a Java process that was running the Arduino IDE that was unkillable, and I mean unkillable. I had to reboot the computer. One summer, I rebooted my Linux computer more in a month than I had in the previous 10 years because of this problem. And it was so punishing that it instilled in me a kind of a, almost a, a DNA level uh, motivation to get away from this IDE. Because in other cases, when the IDE, uh, uh, sorry, when the USB problems uh, happened, uh, you could recover without a reboot. Um, <coughs> There are other things that got in my face that hopefully have been fixed. If you have more than X sketches, you can't find, you can't navigate to them because they didn't think that anybody would have those. I, I so have there a demo of that. So. Say again? I have a demo of that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so they don't automatically switch to a, uh, a scrollable uh, menu bar uh, or list, whatever you call it, and. I, maybe the new one is better, but with most of these IDEs, it's a given that if you've been working on a project and you terminate the IDE and you come back and restart it, it remembers what the heck you were doing. In fact, if it's decent, it remembers all manner of detail and gets you back. If it's really good, it puts you back literally to this. Oops, sorry to the same state that you were in. And the Arduino IDE is on the other end of that curve. It doesn't remember anything. Oh, and finally, uh, the handling of files is peculiar in the sense that files live in multiple places. And there's your sketch directory, and then there's a, an implicit library directory under your sketches directory. There are various semantics to do with subdirectories within your sketch directory, and then there's a library directory over Never Never Land, and there's also a hardware-specific <coughs> directory. And as you do development with Arduino and are forced into discovering what all of those things are and what they have to do and so on, 
you constantly wonder, you're, you're, sit, you're sitting in the IDE and wondering what's really happening because it's highly uh, masked. So, <clears throat> can, can I, it, are you suggesting that if someone is for the first time going to start? No. I'm not. In, in fact, if, if, if you're a beginner, I, I strongly recommend that you begin with Arduino IDE. Even if you're on Linux? If you're, a, if you're an experienced software developer... Uh, you'll make your own decision. <laughs> you'll make your own decision and you, you'll probably only spend about an, an hour with your Arduino IDE and then you'll go off and do something well, else. Then, then if why you, would I even want to do that? Why would you want to... Well, why would I... Based upon this, why because do I this even want to frustrate hand. myself the, with the Linux? The Arduino ID. IDE holds your hand. It does pre-pre-processing, and it does. Uh, and, uh, and the great community does it that way. And, and the so great community things, does it. Okay. And 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 if 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 you're in the mode of, you don't want to figure out how it works. You don't want to learn the peculiarities of uh, function. Uh, prototypes, forward references, uh, you don't want to deal with any of that stuff and um, uh, you, you, what you would most like to do is, is go to the instructables to caught your interest and more or less just replicate those results in minutes and that's what you do with the IDE, typically, quite often. That you, you can just literally drop the thing in and it'll just work and like I said, it, it, it does a lot of hand-holding, okay? Uh, the motivation section that I was describing is why, I mean, I was trying to explain why it just became problematic for me, okay? Um, now, quick explanation in case anybody isn't aware of it, but the Arduino is a name that some guys in Italy and various other countries cooked up some years ago for a single board computer based on Atmel microprocessors, specifically the 8-bit flavor of Atmel, which Atmel calls the AVR series. And over time, the Arduino Became, came to be known, uh, it came to be equated with different versions of boards also using 8-bit uh, uh, Atmel chips and gradually they began to accommodate different kinds of processors and more recently they, there are, there's real extensibility support in the IDE for going to other flavors of boards up to and including uh, x86 boards created by Intel, uh, ESP8266 boards that, that are the uh, little ARM-based um, wireless gadget that's gotten a lot of attention lately, and so on. So they've, the IDE has really extremely good uh, extensibility support now. Uh, it didn't, you know, a couple of years ago, was a different world. But the point I'm trying to get at is that for the original mainstream common Arduino boards, behind the scenes you're using, in a Linux environment, you're simply running the uh, AVR compiler and linker um, that's been around for a long time. It probably predates Arduino, but I don't know. I don't know the history that much. And there's no reason why you can't just run those directly, which is uh, one way to mimic the IDE. <coughs> and so the uh, IDE is doing this and kind of preventing you from seeing the complexity, but at the same time, in other circumstance, it's preventing you from understanding why your program is building, or why the down the programming process is hanging, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so these AVR tools are directly available, 
and uh, I'm going to show you some demo. I'm going to just got about two more slides, and then uh, I'll show you what these uh, tools actually look like. Uh, but uh, that's kind of getting into uh, a level of detail that I. It's not really the point. Um, <clears throat> so it's possible to type command lines, Linux command lines, that exactly emulate what the Arduino IDE is doing behind the scenes. Um, as soon as you've done that about three times, you will put those commands into a script because, like, there are uh, 500 switches and options between the uh, compilation and the linking and uh, the programming process and so on. In the, the IDE, one of the downsides of the put in mind is that it hides those things. Sometimes you need a linker option you know, to do that, something arcane, and, and the IDE just won't let you, there's no way to put those in there. I might be wrong, but I think when I ran the latest, greatest Arduino IDE in, ver <coughs> in verbose mode, it doesn't show you what the Well, they show it to you, but if you need to... Oh, that, so they still do it. Okay, so that was bogus. So, anyway, um, if you take this to, to the limit, you're, you're sitting there figuring out all these different options. What kind of board do I have? Um, <coughs> And so on. Well, this guy in Great Britain named Tim Marston made a make file, and uh, a lot of people are using it. Um, it doesn't seem to have caught, uh, kept up with the most recent changes. They moved the board's description file. That's one of the things behind the scenes that's kind of a key mechanism uh, driving the Arduino IDE. Um, but Tim's make file is uh, really, really powerful. It allows you to literally just drop down into the middle of an Arduino sketch and uh, type make, point to this make file using dash f. <coughs> um, and things will just work, plus or minus forward references. Um, it doesn't do a pre-pre-pass to figure out what the function references are going to be. And so if you're used to the Arduino IDE, you know that you don't actually have to declare a function before you use it, let alone declare, you give it a signature to tell it what the formal parameters are and so on and so forth. You can just use it. And the way it does that is it does automatic magic and behind the scenes is putting function prototypes in so that the compiler knows exactly what it is that's being referenced. If you're doing it yourself, you can't do that because you're not running the automagic tool that creates <coughs> these function prototypes behind your back and so on. Um, so all this means is if, if you if you have structured your program in a typical fashion where a leaf function is up here and a function that references that is next and so on and your main tends to be at the bottom, then everything's cool. If not, you will rearrange it before it will build with this system. Um, at the same time, um, by using this, there's Again, the recurring theme is that there are details that you really, really wish that you you could know that um, are available to you, uh, whereas with the IDE, um, you're mystified. Now, if, uh, you'll see in the demo in a second that uh, in order to, to use Tim Marston's make file, you have to type in a command that's about that long. Uh, and um, you don't have to do that very many times before it, you start wishing that you had that kind of automated. And in my case, um, uh, I just decided, well, I'll, I'll make a uh, shell script that invokes this make. And um, 
that process is, is, is just starting to look like it's moving in the direction of complexity that makes me want to switch from a very plain Born shell to uh, Python. So what I'm going to do is uh, uh, just show what the build process looks like using the makefile um, and what a kind of a typical uh, do a little code, try it, go back, change it, try it again looks like. And I just realized I should not give it two boards at the same time. And then um, I'll, uh, I'll show you the script that kind of further automates it and uh, give very quick mention to uh, uh, an extra step that I'm starting to, uh, to explore. It is the issue with Linux and the IDE itself is that any connection to which distribution of Linux you're running, are you aware? No. The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the um, USB failure that I had, um, I couldn't find a, um, an association <clears throat> with any distro. In fact, um, first, I, that, that we could talk a lot about that particular problem because it is so terribly painful. Um, but, uh, and as a side note, yeah. I never had a problem with Linux at all using music to me. The reason I'm a Linux and Arduino issue is the fact that although they're on Linux that are programmers, have a preconceived notion how an IDE should look like, how the mm -hmm. should look like, and Arduino is far from that. Arduino is really designed for getting started and making it easy for hand-holding. There's no ways of breaking that off and dropping down to the nitty-gritty and the detail stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing really wrong with Linux and Arduino in general. I mean, I, I mean he mentioned the issue you know, of um, uh, processing it. I mean, I never had that happen, but maybe you're lucky or not or, or lucky, I'm lucky, but the main thing is a lot of people who do Linux are just are frustrated with the lack of choices to do more work and dig in and, and, and play a true IDE. Did you, did you agree with that or that mistake? Sorry. Um. <laughs> so, John's board suffered a misadventure while he was getting ready for this. No. And uh, I'm in the state where my laptop is, was literally not configuring the USB connection. Nothing to do with that other problem I was talking about. Sorry about that. But uh, solid state disks are so nice. Maybe you should get a Windows computer. <laughs> <laughs> it has Windows on the partition, but I, I, I only tell that to people at a Shots fired. Oh, God. So now my uh, video mode is messed up. It's a lot of pixels. Hey, hey, Pete, did, um, while you're doing that, is um, um, people, there are, there are people who run um, get Eclipse working with the tool chain. Is that, have you ever played with that? I, mean, I, I, I haven't, but. I haven't played it, played with it in the contents, uh, in the context of uh, Uno's. Please work. Okay, one more time with feeling here. Okay, now this is going to work. So, um, <coughs> so, in order to, uh, is there anybody here that has no idea what an Arduino IDE is? Is 
seen it. Or... Okay, fantastic. Okay, all right. So the IDE is um, doing a series of compilation and linking things to put your program together, and then it's invoking a program to put it through a serial port or into a USB device or something to program your chip. And uh, Tim Marston's make file, which I'll actually, I don't think there's any point in showing you the make file because that's, that's an arcane language. Um, if you want to call it a language. Uh, but it's simply invoking make using, um, I, th this is pointing to Tim's make file. So if you download this make file, put it in a path, and simply pass it, you, it, you can start using it. Um, the only mods that I, I'm using his current uh, .4 version, which is the next to the most recent version that he's put out, and uh, uh, the, the, the changes that I made are inconsequential. Um, I'm pretty confident that you can download this thing and just use it immediately. Um, and you specify a make variable that points to the, the device that's involved, that, that you're using, and uh, you have to know that an UNO, when you plug it in, it makes a pseudo-terminal called TTYACM0, and um, I know that's, that seems pretty involved, but if you're using a lot of different boards and directly programming chips and so on, you get used to these details. And then there's a, uh, a make target that says, do all the builds and go ahead and, and program the chip. So this single line is more or less equivalent to bringing up the Arduino IDE and clicking on the little uh, arrow that says, just do everything and make my sketch work. So if we um, invoke that, Command. And I can manually. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I left out a detail, of course. Um, the uh, this is an assignment telling it what kind of board you've got. Um, and of course, with the IDE, you have to explicitly <coughs> tell it what board you expect to be using. You have to explicitly tell it what device. So you actually have to know what these funny pseudo terminals uh, are doing. So if I run this, um, what it will do is go in and figure out what hasn't been done. The, the basic notion behind the, the, the Unix slash Linux make command is that it builds, it, it gets to a target, and that target is dependent on intermediate steps which are dependent on intermediate steps and so on and it, it, it basically goes through and it figures out all the dependencies and it satisfies them. And in this case the only thing that had to be done was the invocation of the programmer to put the image into the chip. It, it can't know that that's already done because it has no way of of, of looking at the state of the image in the chip and saying, oh, my image is newer than that, so I need to reprogram. Oh, it's older, so I don't need to do that. So it's always <coughs> However, if the program hasn't been compiled or linked, and you invoke this, this make command, then you will see uh, all of the uh, C++ compiler invocations. So for example, here's one of the um, stream library. And one of the little known facts with the Arduino IDE is that all of the dependent code that goes, that, that's required by your sketch gets built. So the, it, the whole nine yards is built every time, no matter what. Um, there, it's a different philosophy than uh, 
in other development environments. Well, anyway, this guide, it does the same thing. And if, for example, uh, you've just modified your program and ran this make again, it would only recompile the one thing. It would relink it, which is combining all the object files into the executable, and then it would feed it down into uh, uh, Flash. I think if you do a make clean, it'll clean out all the object files, and then when you do a make again, it'll build everything. Yeah. So, so here, here's when I did that. Oh, I'll <laughs> That's a, that is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, Linux programmers don't waste characters. Yeah. It, 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 it not only it, GNC. It, it blows away um, everything. It could possibly. So it's not in the make file. You've created a separate file. I, I made a cheat script for that. Yeah. But it is in the make file. Oh, no, no, it isn't. You need a minus F. Yeah, so if I had put in a minus F, of course, uh, yeah, there's a clean target. But the clean target isn't as smart as my C script, my clean script, because otherwise, I well, I might be using that, but it's too many characters. One character is, and I mean, so if if I go like this, that will... Oops, no it won't. Oh, it doesn't do dots. What did history. you want to do? Oh, but if I, uh, my, my, my arms are not lined up. So with command line history, with Linux, you can really, really get economical with your keystrokes. And if you have spent 45 years typing for a living, and you're, you know, your hands are getting tired, Especially if you spent the first three years with an ASR 33. <laughs> uh, minimizing the keystrokes and minimizing mouse movements is good. Sir. Hello, Trivia. Did you know that the uh, developer of Aviar to do is local to this area? I didn't. Um, Ryan Dean, actually, he worked with SAS. That's fantastic. Um, uh, a number of things were created around here. Um, Usenet was created. Actually, uh, AVR did actually predate basically the um, uh, all of the um, uh, Arduino environment. I was using AVR did back then as a command line. Basically, and BDI Mike from the company had he was selling AVR boards. That also was AVR boards again predating all. Uh, right, I, I was speculating that the, so that tool, and we know the GNU, uh, the GNU's GNU, GNU and AVR suite Duke goes back to the early 80s, early 1980s. Is, is there would there be any chance of getting that guy to come here and give a talk one day, you think? Or? Possibly. He washed his hands of a year or do a while back, actually. He actually he did it for a while, maintained it for a while, and I got tired of uh, keeping it maintained. So I, I have chatted with him a while, but I, 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 I can certainly contact him and see. But he's actually he's no longer maintaining it. It's still being maintained, but not by him. Who actually maintains yeah. it now? Yeah. And th this kind of gets to a topic. Um, If somebody could remind me to pop the stack and go back to that topic as soon as I'm done, uh, I'd like to, uh, to do that. The stack. Not, not being uh, recorded, but I'd like to touch on that no same subject. Uh, so if we go back and, and invoke this, as we can see, uh, especially if you don't have command line uh, history references and you actually have to type all of this stuff in, Look at all the characters you have to type. Well, I got tired of that. So my standard uh, mechanism is called G. It's just a, a script. And if I'm um, editing the program, um, and actually, uh, well, let's just pretend that this thing blinks, and um, if I if I make this change, it, it's it's slowing the progression of links down, and now I can just recompile it. And if that change was wrong, and I need to put in another change, that's about how fast the edit. Do it again. Try it again. Look over. Oh, I'm not happy with that blinking. I want a different kind of blinking. And is that faster than the IDE? 
Uh, I don't know. Some people, some pe I, does, does the Arduino IDE support hotkeys? Does anybody know? Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Control so, U. File and upload. So, so Control U. It, it still is, takes way longer than that. Because yeah. it recompiles everything. Yes. So Slowly. It's kind of run Java. Java. Thanks. Yeah. There's a lot of reasons. <coughs> See you later. Uh, yeah, there are there are a number of factors behind it not being uh, as fast, um, but I haven't actually tested it. The Arduino MK script. There is a new maintainer of it, and there is now a GitHub account that you can go to and grab the entire package and pull down the latest version. Uh -huh. But it has significantly changed, so you're going to have to get. Just do it again because cool. it does a bunch of other things. Okay. I just thought, I wanted to show you very quickly what G does because G is a whole lot smarter. It's not just a synonym for the 50 characters. <laughs> what it actually does is it goes through and for the common cases it figures out what I've actually got. Whether or not the thing that's plugged in is manifesting as ACM0 or USB0, um, it can actually, um, uh, it, 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 can, it can kind of <coughs> make wise guesses about things and detect whether or not the build failed. And, and for my environment, it can recover and say, well, I better try this other thing. And so for a common cases, I can plug different boards in, and the right thing happens in a hurry. And I'm not sitting there like, oh yeah, yeah, I switched from a this to a that, and therefore I have to go in and edit this 40 character type uh, make file command that I just typed and fix that. Um, and the last thing is uh, I'm, I'm, I'm exploring um, taking this a uh, whole lot further and um, what I would like to do and, the, and I think it's possible uh, I probably have to make a custom version of ABR dude that will time out very very quickly but uh, I may have found a workaround for that but I want to be able to have a handful of boards and not have to plug and unplug them all at the same time and I would like to be able to just say build and if there's ambiguity have it immediately ask me oh do you want to build for the Uno or for the Mega? And the answer to that question should only take one character and then it will go and do that and behind the scene oh, what my script is doing it's hiding all of this complexity and uh, <laughs> so I'm Recapitulating an IDE, um, but it's it's finding all of the programming environments and the chips and the chip type and the fact that oh I messed up when I ordered these chips from Mauser and I ended up with 328s instead of 328Ps, which requires custom boards, file entry, blah blah blah. I don't want any of that. But, you know, I'm tired of dealing with those details and I just want it to do the right thing. So in a sense I'm going to go circle and recapitulating the Arduino IDE in the sense of hiding complexity, hiding details, um, although actually I'm not really hiding them because they're just right here, they're not behind a GUI. If, if you go to the source code, the Arduino IDE, it's a very large collection of Java, and answering questions with that Java source code, it, like it key that's right. I, I think I'm done. Uh, answering questions uh, you know, like where does that file actually live? What was? Wh why is it invoking this option in this circumstance, and so on? This, the Java source code is not the place to answer that question. The, the support forums are the place. You could probably spend two hours on the support forum searching and asking questions and so on before you would find it. Plus, 
when you'd have to be able to read Java code. So that's, that's it. Um, and as um, Rod was saying, uh, or somebody was saying, there are other tools available in Linux environments um, that are quite powerful. Um, there are Eclipse-based environments. There's a debugger called GDB. I don't know whether it's usable with uh, AVR 8-bit chips or not. But when you switch to, when you move up to the 32-bit chips like the ARMs and so on, um, I, think it, um, the, I think maybe it is. The choices are very rich. Yeah. So that's it. Any questions? Okay, what I was going to say 